Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya Kwanza government is in serious trouble. The United Nations Human Rights Office, through their spokesperson, today issued a statement on the state of the demonstrations in the Republic of Kenya. And that statement, in my view, is bad news for Kenya Kwanza government. What is really happening to Kenya Kwanza? Is it possible that there is a fallout between Kenya Kwanza government and those who place them in power? Let me go through that statement. And I want you to pay very close attention to the tone of the statement. I want to go through the few points which are in that statement. Then later on, I'm going to point out what I have observed from that statement which should actually worry Kenya Kwanza. Let us begin by going through this letter. The letter is media statement, comment by, by UN Human Rights Office spokesperson Jeremy Lawrence on Kenyan protest. It's issued actually from Geneva on the 14th day of July 2023, which means the United Nations are actually following the events as they unfold in the Republic of Kenya. This is what they're saying. The United Nations Human Rights Office is very concerned by the widespread violence and allegations of unnecessary and disproportionate use of force, including the use of firearm by the police during protest in Kenya. Now, from the opening statement alone, these guys are already on the neck of the police. The use of firearms. <clears throat> and they are saying, the reports say up to 23 people have been killed and dozen injured in the demonstrations in the past one week, which means they have the figures, they have the data in their fingertips. So far, over 20 people have actually succumbed and very many are in hospital. Remember, Ray Udinga and Azimio stated yesterday that they are giving five days mourning period and during that period, they'll be visiting the victims. Today, you saw Azimio principles in Machakos. And they also issued a statement, which means the United Nations, their human rights office, has all this information. And it's proceeding at paragraph two, that we call for prompt, thorough, independent, and transparent investigations into the deaths and injuries. And that's why I began this video by asking you guys to pay very close attention to the tone. How do you get the tone of this paragraph? That we call for prompt, thorough, independent, and transparent investigations into the deaths and injuries. They are talking of deaths and injuries. So far, if you are in Kenya, you know so well that of all the deaths that have occurred as a result of uh, these demonstrations, none of them has been occasioned by the demonstrators. Of all the injuries so far, which are running over hundreds, none has ever been occasioned by the demonstrators. So which means the target of this letter is actually the government, not the organizers of this event and its proceeding. Those responsible must be held to account. So basically, this is where the individual responsibilities are going to come in. And the police must be very careful. Effective measures, effective measures to prevent further deaths and injuries must be adapted. So basically, they are telling the government to prepare to prevent further deaths and injuries which are actually caused by the police. Interestingly, listen to paragraph 3. In light of the calls for further protest next week, because as you have said, next week on Wednesday, wako kwa barabara. On Thursday, wako kwa barabara. What are the UN saying? They are saying, in light of the calls for further protest next week, we call on the authorities to ensure the rights to peaceful assembly is guaranteed, as guaranteed by the Kenyan constitution and international human rights laws. So basically they are telling Kenyans that it's a right, they are telling Kenyan government that it's a right for Kenyans or for any individual to protest. And this is what they are telling, proceeding to say, the policing of protest must seek to facilitate peaceful assemblies and any use of force must be guided by the principle of legality, necessity and proportionality and non 
discrimination. Firearms should never be used to disperse protest. How many people have we lost as a result of firearms? And how many people are currently nursing wounds as a result of firearms? The United Nations are advising them, reminding them, that as per, as per the, the Constitution and as per human rights, the UN human rights, no firearm should be used. So they expect the police to deal with these people, but without any firearm. I think this is going to mark the end of police brutality. In short, what these guys are telling Kenya Kwanza government, that police brutality is not acceptable, and they are proceeding. We appeal for calm and encourage open dialogue to address social, economic, and political grievances with the aim of identifying lasting solutions in the interest of all Kenyans. Now, in your own view, what is your take on this statement? <laughs> For me, Kenya Kwanza are losing. So I want us to look at the implication, what I think about this particular letter or statement. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And allow me to also take this opportunity to thank those who send me coffee, you know, today's Friday, a gentleman from all the way from uh, Turkana. Thank you so much. You can see the name on the screen there. Thank you so much. You can also do the same from the numbers on your screen. That's the best way you can support this channel. And it also goes a long way in helping me produce more videos. Now, let us get to the main issue. For me, I'm coming to four conclusions about this letter. Number one is a question which most people have actually raised. Is it possible that the Western nations are now dumping William Samuel Arapruto? Because let's face it, the people who installed William Ruto as the president of the Republic of Kenya are none other than the West. The United States of America ambassador was actively involved at Bomas. The United Kingdom, the, the British ambassador to Kenya, was actively involved in ensuring that William Ruto was declared the president of the Republic of Kenya. And they've supported William Ruto since that time up to now. But William Ruto has been engaging in two serious mistakes, which probably he might re regret. The first mistake William Ruto has been involving in is to go outside there to fight the dollar. Very bad mistake. You know, politics is a game of interest. The United States of America supported William Ruto because they had an interest. The truth of the matter is that the West have always viewed Rail of Muludinga as someone who studied in Russia. And therefore, his ideologies will always list, I mean, will always lean towards socialism while uh, they weren't capitalist. So Ruto actually it was a good fit for them. You know, being, being uh, Ruto is a capitalist, his past, they thought they would easily tame him. But Ruto is now going beyond that, trying to fight the dollar. Trying, the second mistake Ruto is doing, trying to go to East. Let me ask you, the Iranian president was here, Right? And there were confusion about his visit to the country. He was supposed to come the previous day. He didn't. Then he came today, the next day. You know, then he left. What was his interest? There are serious politics behind that. 
You know, William Ruto, when he became the president of the Republic of Kenya, he appointed Eden Dwale, the president, I mean the minister for defense. The borders were open. They ended up closing those borders. Why do you think they closed those borders? And they are saying that the Iran government will actually set up some uh, factory for assembly of vehicles. <laughs> Let me not get into those details. There's no way Americans will allow that. The second thing I'm getting here is the ICC. After all this, rest assured that a list will be submitted to ICC. An envelope. Whether that envelope will include Raila, whether it will include Kalonzo or some of Azimio supporters, I don't know. But one thing I'm sure about is that some individuals within government will take personal responsibility. Remember, Azimio actually wrote to ICC in April when they began these demonstrations. Probably that explains why these guys are following up. In their letter to the UN, Azimio listed nine issues. But three are prominent. That there, there are targeted attacks on protesters. Which is clear. There is no way Mandamano can happen in Kisi, Kisumu, Migori, Kisi becoming uh, the epicenter. Then six people die. Then those who die are Kisumu and Migori. Targeted attacks. And they also claimed that there is a special squad of rogue officers which was set up to deal with them. If you referred to the UN letter, it is also addressing the same. So for me, Kenya Kwanza government is in deep trouble. And they're also saying, Azimio's letter was also talking of the unconstitutional banning of demonstrations. In uh, the UN human rights letter, they are also very specific on the rights to demonstrate and to protest. So in my understanding, there's some ICC cards which are being played somewhere. Number three, this letter is also emphasizing on the rights to picket. They're actually supporting the protest. Which means William Ruto and his government cannot just come out and now try to defend their action on banning the demonstrations. They can't. That's a human right. And even if they were to ban them and these guys go ahead, they can't use firearms. That's the law. And lastly, I also tend to think that this letter is actually informed by the pressure from the international community. And it's all about propaganda war, warfare. If you ask me, Azimio is winning that propaganda warfare hands down. And that's why Kenya Kwanza were actually caught by surprise. The, 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 the PS for uh, foreign affairs, for foreign affairs, wrote in response to the letter by the UN, it saying, while regretting and decrying the unfortunate loss of lives and in or injury, the reckless mobilization of lawless gang to loot, destroy property, disrupt business, deprive many of means of livelihood, and create an environment of disorder must receive equal condemnation. In fact, from this statement also, from his response, is also acknowledging that the UN has condemned the government and is also asking the UN to also condemn the demonstrators and that should worry Kenya Kwanza government. Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.